What's up, YouTube? This is Carl. Uh, we're finally here. Here's my old four link. And uh, it works fine. But I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I think it could look better. So, uh, this time around, we're going to do, we're going to cantaloupe this thing with a twist. So, let me bring you in a little closer, show you what we got, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, here's what we got. Uh, adjustable fronts, adjustable lowers, uh, adjustable lowers on that side, fixed on the top. Uh, when I did the math on this, it was, I could go anywhere from like 30% squat to 30% anti-squat. So, I just don't like that. I, it's fine. I don't know. It's fine for the peasants, but we're going to do something special. I want that to sit here. I want that shock to mount right there for the simple fact that I'm not going to cover a whole lot of this. I'll do some bead roll panels and dress it up, but I'm going to leave the majority of the bed open. And I want that to be my focal point. So you can see I kind of got after this a little bit and started making I did a little little CAD, a little cardboard aided drafting, just to kind of figure out what that bracket needs to be to mount that shock there. Now, for the next question, well, not the next question, the next issue, if I mount that shock there, I could do the bell, the cantilever there, and I could drop it straight down to the axle and everything would work, no problem. But that's really narrow on this axle and it's gonna it's gonna mess with my roll center like i feel like i'm gonna get too much sway out of it so i want the coil over there but i want my attachment point out here so what i've got oh here's a stainless tank that i did forever ago and finally found uh i hate this too so here in the next few episodes we're going to scrap this piece of shit and build something that looks better. But anyway, that brings us to this. I've been machining like crazy. This is all chrome molly, 4140 bar. And I just barely got my thrust bearings. Get off there, get now. Fine. This so what I've got is a thrust washer on both sides of that. I still have to machine a puck in there. But anyway, this bushing did a bronze insert. We'll weld in to the frame. There. Okay. Well, maybe there. I haven't I haven't got this part located yet. But anyway, that'll weld into the frame, give me a nice solid pivot point. This guy here will go through said bushing and the shot, I'll build the arms for one side of the cantilever on this and my coil over will attach to that. And then I cut a keyway in this and in this so that this will slide on to the outside of said shaft and key in so that they move in unison and then I will weld the corresponding arms to the cantilever out here to drop down to there so that I keep a nice wide stance not stance what's the word I'm looking for uh, I don't know the coilovers will be out out towards the corners where they should be and that in theory should be perfect. Okay, just like any other project, we're gonna start off getting everything leveled up. Uh, you might wonder why there's two levels there. Well, the top one doesn't fit between the tires without touching. And this bottom one here 
I don't know why. Well, maybe there. Has the dumbest bubble I think I've ever seen. And it's not true. Because if you put this guy on there, we're just right. So, we're up on jack stands. We're all good and level. I'll get that cut off. I'll get those bottoms cut off. Get us back to a clean slate. I have, I forgot to record, but uh, I went ahead and converted this guy to metal. So I'll do just a little bit more fitting to get that nice and tight. I'll get that burned in. I'll get the other one put in. And then while I was on the computer, I went ahead and burned out all my arms that will fit these. So I just got a little bit of cleanup. And a little bit of cleanup from the plasma. And then they'll fit nice and tight. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys right now, I'm gonna keep my fingers out of the way. I haven't done this before, so this might all be bullshit. I might be, I might not be doing this right at all, but we're doing it anyways. So really my biggest worry on this whole thing, uh, I mean, you can change your ratios just on your cantilever arm, just on your whole locations. You can go one to one, two to one. Three to one, you can drop it by 20%, giving it different positions on each side. That's just simple math. I'll let you guys, like if this is something you're doing, that's just something you're gonna have to figure out. My biggest worry though was this shock runs this way, my arm's coming this way. If that compresses too much and that arm trails over, I was worried about it knuckling over, so. I did all this on the computer and figured out that my straight up position would be those two holes vertical to each other off the back side of that. And that way, even if I can press that shock fully, I think I uh, might have to double check now, but I want to say my rear coilovers have five inches of stroke. So at five inches of stroke, it doesn't break below the center line of the shock. Of, yeah, of the shock and my pivot. And I'll show you that when I get it all together. I'll try and explain that a little better. But I mean, other than that, this all seems fairly simple. So I'm gonna get these cleaned up. I'm gonna get those welded in. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Got those in. I screwed up here though. This is off. And I'll probably, I should have just made a new one, but I'll just do a filler right there. Cause this just isn't quite, it doesn't fit right. I'll do something later for that. I just have this sitting just sitting basically so that I can pull measurements here and see where these arms needed to mount on this uh, hinge setup so this is all in and done it looks pretty cool I'm like so far I'm liking it it to look pretty good when it's all done so anyway, now, uh, onto that pivot point. So what I'm doing now is pulling a bunch of measurements, getting everything level, square, straight, blah, blah, blah. So that I could come over here and figure out, like this is where the frame's gonna sit. This is the stick out inboard. And that's where that shock body is to stay straight with the frame. So this guy will weld on there and there. 
So I'm gonna get these cleaned up. I'll get that welded on. And most of that stuff. And then I think after that, I can figure out where that pivot needs to sit this way. We'll get the frame marked, pop a hole through. And I mean, kind of downhill from there. So this is coming nice. This is coming along very, very nice. Inside's welded up. And let me show you why, what we're doing here. I'm not talking about the offset. So when I drew this up, man, this stuff's just ridiculous one handed. I should really try and set things up a little better. So if I square those holes and go center, you can see. Maybe, maybe you can't. Anyway, you gotta take my word for it. That center, like the center of those holes, and the center of this spindle here is inch and a quarter. So inch and a quarter from the center of this to the center of those holes. And that's, uh, that's how that guy needs to sit. So, we got our left and our right. So over here, when I had this coilover bolted in, where is it? This line right here. I just rammed a mark, uh, Sharpie through that coilover and drew a line on that. So that's gonna be the center of our hole for our coilover. Now, uh, since this was already coilovered before out here, you know, I know that it compresses one inch with the weight that I have on back here. So I'll move that line forward one inch and then get my height measurement and I'll know exactly where I got to put that through the frame, where I got to pop a hole and weld that bushing in. And that should pretty much take care of this side of things. So I'm gonna do a few more measurements, figure this out, and we'll get some holes popped, get that bushing in, and then, God, then we'll have then we'll have some stuff. We'll we'll, we'll be making progress then, and then it'll put us to the outside. So let's let me get this taken care of, and then we'll move to the outside. Okay, we got my height figured out. Let me show you what we got. So, this is where my coilover rode. It turns out my center needs to be like right at the top of the frame. So I jumped forward an inch for compression, an inch and a quarter for the center, brought that line down, and I have four and a half from where this needs to mount to the center of my bushing, which puts my center just below the edge of that frame. So, uh, I could grab the plasma cutter, do it by hand, buzz it out, no problem. The problem is, like, you're going to have to cut it by hand. Some of it's going to be underneath. It might end up not quite right. It's going to be a lot of dressing, a lot of grinding, because you'd have to cut it small. So, something easy for this is... Find a nut. Hang on. 
it'll fit just over your pilot bit. Like it's not super tight, but it's tight enough once it gets down past the threads that it's not gonna let that wander. So we'll take this nut. We'll weld it. Anyway, we'll take this nut, we'll weld it on at our center, and that way that pilot bit will have something to hold this perfect. We can plunge that through and it'll give us a perfect fit, no slag, no grinding, no crawling upside down. So if you run into an issue like this, that's a quick, easy way to take care of it. see it's a perfect fit it's perfectly square no cleanup just maybe grind a little bit of mill scale and that's good so if we throw this together now so close like I don't think you'd ever really catch it so I am going to oh actually before that we got our first design flaw I'll show you real quick it was an easy one I didn't leave enough room right here I had interference with the coil over so easy enough just kind of knife edged it a little bit now that's no big deal so I'm going to get these welded in and we'll be done with the inside. We'll be on to the outside. I got a little excited. I, I might have forgot to record a couple steps, but no biggie. They are in. Bam! And then I went ahead, jammed a piece of keystock in there, just lightly, to locate this. And got these tacked on side to side. So, why am I shaking the phone? Whipping my finger over here, just oozing with, um, what's the word? Excitement. Yeah. So, I just lined it up with that lower arm. I don't know why it was there, and I just, I thought it would be weird if it wasn't. So, I'll pop that and that off. Get those welded. Get the little, uh, gusset back part piece in there. And then I'm gonna do something with this end and we'll go over that here in just a minute after I get this other stuff done. You already saw me weld the other one, so I'm just gonna skip ahead. So no, no, uh, no time lapse for you. 
I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now I just made this piece. Oh, these are all welded out. So they're good to go. I just machined this piece. Had a lot of chatter on it because, uh, well, it was a quickie. I wasn't really trying to make a nice part. So this will bolt it to the end of that shaft and keep everything from moving. And it'll actually, the way I've got it all set up is this will actually put a little preload on the thrust bearings. And I mean, I could just leave it as a cap, but where I have three inches of key stock, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to pull that off. And with a bearing riding inside of there, there's no good way to really pry on it or anything else without screwing stuff up. So what I did is I tapped that to 9 16 because my bolt to hold everything together is half inch. So half inch bolt will go through, hold everything together, and when it comes time to pull it, I'm gonna stick a small rod in that hole, grab a 9 16 bolt, and it should basically press this off. And uh, that way I'm not fighting, I'm not fighting it on and off. I mean, I doubt this has to come apart very much, but I mean, it's gonna have to come apart to go get blasted, uh, paint, shit like that. So it's gonna have to come on and off a couple times at least. And then, you know, after, after a while, after it gets rusty and whatnot, I just feel like this is probably a better idea. So I'll weld this on now and uh, slap this on and then we're down to just building our links from this arm down to the axle. So I'm gonna weld this up real quick and I'll check back in. Well, I'll bring you back when uh, we start making links. Okay guys, I screwed up. So I forgot to order Himes to build that link. So I ran down to the local, not really hardware store, bolt store, whatever, and picked up what they had. And of course, they didn't have what I need, so I kind of just put something together, or grab, well, I grabbed what they had. We'll make it work. So I ended up with a male and a female because I didn't have four males or four females or lefts and rights, and it was a, it's kind of a mess. So this is what I ended up with, and coming over here, I was just going to build an arm between them, but it's pretty... Can you see it? There it is. There's that bottom right there. It's it's hanging on by like a half inch of threads, and I don't really like that. So I think I think what I'll do is I'll just make a short arm and lathe over here. I've got this stuff. It's just regular old. A36, if I remember right, or 1018. So I'll probably just spin something out with a stud on one side, tap the other side of it, and give myself, I don't know, like an inch. Like I could make that work. I could build a bracket that just jumps onto that, but with that being so short, I mean, it's probably not a big deal. But something inside me just says that needs to be a little bit longer. Like I've just got a hunch that I'll, I'll fight it if I leave it like that and I don't know why. So I'm gonna drop that down probably, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches. And then on that lower mount, I wanna do like three different positions to help adjust ride height. So by the time I get springs and spring compression and everything else worked out, I have a little more adjustment for ride height so I can put this thing exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna jump on the lathe. Start turning that down and then uh, we'll figure out something for mounts on the axle after the arms are done. Design flaw number two. So I started spinning these out. I was gonna thread that. Just go into that, thread that. Hold that, yada yada. 
I wasn't paying attention though. I started, well, I drilled it for the female threads. And I had my head in my ass, so you can see here, this is drilled that deep, which is that deep. So, I mean, there's a solid 16th holding these pieces of shit together. So, round two. I'm showing you this just so you guys know, like, if you get a huge bill from your car builder or you're in your garage, stupid problems like that add up and make this I mean, they can make any custom work, just, uh, what's the word? Oh yeah, fucked. So I'll make another set and we'll come back. Version two. This is what it should look like. I got a little scarring from the vise, but internal threads, external threads gives us this. That pisses me off. But whatever. So this just goes to show that uh, if you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment, you can make a five dollar part. So, and it only takes it only took three tries in like five hours. Not really, but I might be exaggerating a little bit. But anyway, yeah. So now I'll get those thrown on, and we can finally start making the axle brackets. Here we are, all done. So, turned out pretty nice. So far, I'm liking it. So, in the short videos earlier, you saw I was bottoming out before the shock bottomed out here. I had about three quarters of an inch left to throw in the shock. Uh, that's my fault. I should have, I should have planned a little better, but honestly, I don't think I'll ever travel that far through the shocks range anyways. I've been playing with the different positions that I put in here. Let's see, where are we? I started out here and then I bumped it in to that hole. I don't know if I can do this without really screwing the camera. No, I'm just going to bounce more than the truck. Huge difference. That one inch there took me, I was getting probably an inch and a half, two inches of compression on the outside of the hole, inside hole. I'm getting about half of that. Well, yeah, probably pretty close to that. So I, I feel like that and that little bit there is going to be super handy for, uh, Tuning this all in. We got all the old brackets cut off. I started finishing this out a little bit, but that's gonna be a wrap on this one. So, so I hope you guys liked it. This has been one of my favorite projects. So awesome. Uh, next time, well, I'm gonna throw a cage in this. We'll do. I don't know. You can wait till next time to find out what we're doing. So, till uh, till next time, I'm Carl. Like, subscribe, click the bell, do the thing. So, peace.